Hi everyone, my name is Nina Trizakis and I'm a junior studying accounting at Binghamton University. In this video, I'm going to discuss my leadership journey. First, I'm going to begin by talking about the experiences that shaped my foundation for my personal definition of leadership. Then I'll talk about how it has evolved and transformed. And finally, I'll speak about where I hope to be in the future as a leader. So let's get started. This is my family. I'm a middle child. I have two brothers and I was fortunate enough to be raised by both of my parents. I believe that my my foundation for how I interact with people and perceive interactions was shaped by my family dynamic. I'm definitely the most type A out of my siblings. I've always been comfortable advocating for what I wanted and what I believe is right. Even though we share many of the same values, I quickly became aware of how people with differing personalities approach, react, and respond to situations differently. Even though I wasn't able to adjust my approach to interact with people with differing personalities at the time, having this awareness is definitely something that has stuck with me. This is my best friend Karina. We've been friends since we were four years old, and our families practically grew up together. For as long as I can remember, her parents have been telling me, you're a lawyer, go to law school, you're a lawyer. And that's because I would advocate for Karina in situations where I felt like she wasn't being heard enough or I would defend her in fights with siblings or friends or things like that. Her parents' words gave me insight into who I was as an individual before I was even able to fully comprehend it for myself. And this is also something that has stuck with me. My parents have also greatly shaped the person that I am today. They have instilled the value of hard work and the importance of being motivated in me. My father has instilled a goofiness and a lightness in me, teaching me to never lose sight of childlike wonder, while my mother has taught me to never give up and never stop chasing what you dream of and the value of hard work. I was very lucky and fortunate enough to have a very happy and fun childhood. I was always outside playing games, playing basketball in the driveway with my brothers and friends. Naturally, a love for sports ensued. My father attended Villanova University and was an avid sports fan. He was actually there when the men's basketball team won the national championship in 1985. So by default, my family was also Villanova basketball fans. I remember laying on the floor of my living room as a nine-year-old in awe of their point guard. His name was Scotty Reynolds and he was a great player and an even better leader. He led them to the final four in that year on a game-winning shot. The following clip not only inspired my love for basketball, but also was one of the first times I was truly inspired by a great sports leader. we got plenty of room, or time, I should say, at least four seconds to get it up the floor. Reynolds. Oh! They go to put three seconds or three tenths or four tenths. From there, the rest is history. I started playing basketball when I was nine and immediately fell in love with the game. Soon after, I started playing lacrosse. I played travel basketball starting in fifth grade and played all the way up until 11th grade. It was such a valuable experience in that I learned the value of teamwork, the importance of hard work, and the truth in the statement, mind over matter. My freshman year of high school varsity basketball was another turning point in my development as a leader. The captain of my team, Tiffany, was truly incredible. She was the only healthy senior on a team riddled with injured se other seniors and full of unexperienced freshmen. She took us all under her wing and she was relentless in her willingness to win and to compete. She was kind, but she was stern. She always pushed every single teammate to work hard every second of the game and led by example. To this day, there are few leaders who have inspired me in the way that she has. My junior and senior year, I was the captain of the basketball team. It was the first time I had realized that people view me as a leader, and I was re truly ready to embrace that role. Sometimes being a captain was a difficult situation because my teammates were also my friends, but I learned how to be strong-willed and serious when the time called for it, and more casual and laid back when the situation required it. This is also where I first learned the importance of adaptability. It is not only important, but necessary to adapt the way that you communicate with people in order to truly reach them in a meaningful way. It's also one of the first experience was experiences where I learned being open and approachable are qualities of a strong leader. And this was something that I really tried to implement in my leadership style. 
In this role, I was mostly focused on high task as opposed to high relationship because that's what I felt the situation called for in order for us to be successful, not only from a competitive standpoint, but also as a unified, cohesive team. I'm very grateful to have had these experiences as a member and as a leader on a sports team because it has laid the foundation for who I am as a leader and has also allowed me to realize the potential of my leadership capabilities. Applying to be a part of the Emerging Leaders program the summer before my freshman year at Binghamton was definitely a huge stepping stone in my life. I'm not even sure exactly what prompted me to apply, but I'm so glad that I did. I couldn't have predicted the impact it would have on me. I had the privilege of being a mentee in the sports, recreation, and wellness knowledge community, which was my first choice. I witnessed firsthand the different, differing styles of leadership coming together for the first time, and even though they were different, they were not conflicting. I was inspired by Sarah Thompson, whose kindness, enthusiasm, and dedication to every commitment that she makes had a profound impact on me and helped me discover the kind of leader I aspire to be. I loved being in the program and I was inspired to continue to develop my leadership and networking skills, so it was not even a question that I wanted to apply to be a mentor. I was chosen to mentor for Sports Rec and Wellness, which I was thrilled about because it gave me the opportunity to work with Terry and Sarah again. I also had the pleasure of being paired with Nick, which I'm so grateful for looking back on it now, because not only do I consider him a great leader who inspires me, but I also consider him a good friend of mine. Nick and I are definitely a great leadership pair, and I believe that our strengths and weaknesses balance each other well. Nick has taught me to look more big picture, and has made me further realize the importance of building personal relationships with those you're interacting with. He has taught me to give people the benefit of the doubt. You truly don't know what is going on in most people's lives, so you should treat everyone with a sense of understanding and compassion. The mentoring experience also deepened my desire to learn. I often would ask Terry and Sarah after our meetings to reflect on how I was performing as a mentor. Was I facilitating well? Was I delegating tasks well? Was I being an effective mentor? And I realized that I truly need to be able to take criticism well in order to be the best I can be in all aspects of my life. At the end of the mentoring experience, we were asked to prepare a presentation about our leadership journey. Not only did I feel very unprepared, but I also was shaking, stuttering, and sweating. I realized in that moment that public speaking was a skill that I desperately needed to work on, and it prompted me to apply as a, for a consultant position in the Speaking Center. Not only did the Speaking Center help me improve my own speaking skills, it also taught me how to effectively reach people with my feedback. Not everyone will respond well to criticism and being spoken to in certain ways. I learned to read people well and adapt my feedback and approach in a way that I knew would reach, pe would reach them and be helpful to them. Jonathan Crana, a student who had frequented the, the speaking center that semester, inspired me and helped me realize that public speaking is truly only as scary as you make it. He also taught me that if you are willing to face conflict and problems head on, you can be truly unstoppable. When I gave my final presentation in our speaking center class, I truly felt so fulfilled and proud of myself for the progress I had made and the growth that I had achieved. After my mentor experience, there was absolutely no question if I wanted to complete the ELP triad. The PA role is truly distinct from that of the other roles in ELP. I have really enjoyed taking on a more administrative role and drawing on my experience as a mentee and mentor to design program-wide events and implement the changes I desired I further developed my collaborative skills and was able to learn from my fellow PAs as well. I really learned the importance of high relationship and high task when working in teams and working in leadership roles. Although we joke about never being able to fully emerge as a leader, I believe that that statement is so true. Leadership development is a continuous journey. There is no final destination. Leadership is about inspiring change in others. It is about empowering people to realize their own potential and help them to become a better leader than you. Leadership is about bringing out the best in people. It is about stopping to smell the roses. Leadership is realizing that perfection is impossible, but it is always possible to do your best. Always do your best, and everyone's best is different. You can't always be the best, but you can always do your best.
In my life, I desire to measure my success by the impacts I make on people. I hope to inspire people, to touch people in meaningful ways. I want people to feel the warmth I have to give and the desire I have to learn from everyone I interact with. In my life, I want to put my best effort to learn from every experience and remember to stop and reflect on them along the way. I hope to be able to read people and reach them in ways that they can respond to. I hope to be surrounded by people who inspire me to learn and push me to grow and to be a better version of myself every day. I'd like to thank everyone who has given me these opportunities that have allowed me to grow both personally and professionally over the past three years. Thank you to Debbie and Tyler, who worked tirelessly to run this wonderful program that has continually touched the lives of so many students for the past 10 years. Thank you to my fellow PAs, Nick, Gina, Isabel, Kat, Kelly, Christian, Marissa, and Zach. I've loved getting to know you all, build relationships with you, and learn from you. I'm so eternally grateful to have been a part of ELP for so many years, and I will carry the lessons that I've learned with me throughout my life. Thank you so much.